Hawaiian volcanoes, Hawaiian shield volcanoes, have two main parts. We have a caldera at the very summit, and then we have arms. So these volcanoes are very much like all of us here. Our body, our heart pumps the blood to our arms, right? Okay. These volcanoes do that as well. The main caldera, under the floor of the caldera, is the large magma reservoir. So, right across the street, in the caldera floor, give or take a quarter mile in depth, okay? That's the distance from the entrance stations to here, okay? Take that distance, translate it vertically, is the very tippy top of Kilauea's magma reservoir, okay? That reservoir holds all of Kilauea's lavas that have ever erupted, past tense, is erupting, present, and is going to erupt in the future. Okay? That magma reservoir, that ball that's holding, that balloon. How many of you have played with water balloons? If you say no, you're lying. <laughs> okay. Okay, what happens when you put pressure on that water balloon? Exactly. Okay? The earth is putting pressure on these magma reservoirs, forcing magma out of it. See, one of the main um, mechanisms we think that, drive eruption, that drives eruptions is uh, buoyancy. And that is when you, for many materials, the liquid is less dense than the solid. And uh, that's one of the main factors in buoyancy. If you have a, a liquid and a solid, um, usually the liquid will float to the top and the solid will float to the bottom and water is one notable exception. You all know that ice cubes float on water. Uh, that's because ice is a rare thing where the solid expands more so it's a little bit less dense than the water and it floats. But uh, lava is one of the regular ones where the liquid is less dense than the solid. So in our hot spot we have um, some material that is uh, more liquid than the stuff that's around it, therefore it's more buoyant. And the liquid is being forced up to the surface through the oceanic crust, and it actually, uh, the buoyancy forces it almost to the surface here. Uh, buoyancy is actually a very strong force under volcanism. It's not the only one, but it's one of the major ones. Um, the terrain you're looking at, uh, of course, we're at the edge of uh, Kilauea Crater, and that's Halema Amau uh, Pit Crater in the background. Um, is all formed by uh, volcanics. The whole reason this caldera is here is because we think there's a magma chamber down maybe a couple of miles and at some point in the last few hundred years that magma chamber is emptied causing the roof of the magma chamber to fall in. That's what you're actually seeing here. And then it's filled in a little bit by later eruptions. <coughs> the process of that collapse caused explosions up here and that's uh, while you see the gravel and sort of ash around us and at my feet, it turns out that the easiest thing to use up here for ADZAs was um, blocks of, of rock that had been blasted out of the crater doing a couple explosive eruptions. They just litter the terrain around here, uh, very dense, and most of those you find here, you also find that they've been broken apart and the pieces used for uh, various kind of larger tools. Here's one of those features that we came across where Hawaiians were recognizing that this is a denser type of rock and they would take a more porous rock which doesn't seem to make sense. You don't want to get another hard rock to break the hard rock because then you're just going to have two broken rocks. So if you get a more porous rock, the rock doesn't um, fracture and just break apart but it just chips away. The, the ads makers were experts, so they were able to look at the rock and determine which way it was probably going to crack and how it was going to flake off. So they would strike a certain point and then you'd have this flake that would come off that's just like this. Now eventually what you're going to have is what, what they're aiming for is an ads. And that's something like this. This is not the finished product, and actually this is a, um, a messed up one, because they left it. <laughs> um, something happened to this one, but this is pretty much, I mean, this was almost done. 
So this is what we call an ads preform. Technically, this is an artifact. It's an early form of the end product. Of, from that, starting from that core, leading up to this, and then they take this down. You know, once you get most of the, you know, the big rocks off, then you take this down to the ocean and then you're gonna do the fine polishing. So if you've seen any ads, it's really, really smooth. In many legends, chants, uh, almost every piece of Hawaiian expression about the volcano includes some geologic information. Of course, there's other things in there, emotional uh, things, uh, comments about relationships. Um, they're very deep, intense stories, most of them. But uh, almost all of them have some geology in them, some description of an eruptive aspect, a uh, description of a lava flow, a description of an explosive eruption, uh, descriptions of what happens uh, to the weather during an eruption. You know, a lot of them talk about lightning happening when explosion, explosive eruptions occurred. And all those are really interesting to us. Of course, the, the legends are interesting in general, but uh, they all contain really keen observations that uh, we're just rediscovering now. It's so critical, it's so important to be able to connect with the place um, because it gives you a greater appreciation for um, the dynamics, um, the cultural history. Um, it's not, a tree is not just a tree and a volcano is not just a volcano. Um, it's, it's wonderful that I come from this place um, that I have, I grew up with this knowledge. It was taught to me by, um, by the kupuna, by our elders, um, how, to, how to be respectful, how to act, what to do and what not to do. Um, so that, uh, so as to be respectful. Um, that's very, very key um, when you come to these very spiritual places.